You know, you see all these pictures on television of all the people walking around China and other countries like this. They're walking around outside with a mask to keep all the polluted air from them. Folks, many of us in our own homes have polluted air. Today, Chris Chase is going to join us, and we're going to be talking about that very thing and about photocatalytic science. Really cool stuff. For those of you who are brand new, welcome aboard. Thank you for joining. Then Nurse Jenny Herbacek is going to be talking about uh, cancer's ability to destroy collagen inside your body. I'm going to be doing a teaching on histoplasmosis. You got a bird at home? Did the house you moved into have a bird at home? And then finally, Kyle is in the kitchen to make a drink you are going to love. Thank you for joining us. My name is Doug Kaufman. For the past 40 years, I've dedicated my life and even my career to finding the root cause of disease. Join me and a team of physicians, pharmacists, and scientists, and soon you too will know the cause. Folks, welcome aboard. Thank you for joining us. Right now, I want to introduce many of you who haven't met Chris Chase. He is the, the head of a company called Pioneer, right? Pioneer.net. I'll explain the Pioneer to you. Welcome and thank you for sitting down with us again and continuing our education on this air. We clean our water. We clean our fruit. We clean our vegetables. We clean our meat. We don't seem to clean our air. And the conversation you had last night with that doctor, I think kind of typifies why maybe we don't know about this. Well, it does. I mean, I, you know, I um, r ran into the guy, you know, having dinner and we, we got into a conversation and one thing led to another and he asked me, you know, what I did. And, and uh, he, he's a, an emergency room doc who, who does, um, it's, it's a new field, functional medicine. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, they look at... Um, four or five areas that surround the patient and deal with it on a spiritual level, on a disease level, on an environmental level. And one of the things that, you know, when I was, was talking to him about what I was doing out here and, and, and that sort of thing, he, he wanted to know more about Doug and know the cause. So, I mean, I think you're going to get a call from him. But the, the interesting thing to me was this guy said, we do not know enough or really very little about respiratory issues and environmental connections to your respiratory system and the diseases that you can get exposed to from that. And I, I'm just sitting here thinking, you know, if the docs don't know, how does... How do you find out if you're, you know, if you're a layman out there and you're having joint problems or cardiac problems or, or liver problems or skin problems that could be associated mm. with what you're breathing? Chris, you got into this many, many years ago, decades ago, and you didn't get in blindly. You did some tests. Those tests were done out in a neighborhood in California where you had the scientists come in and see if there was anything to this. Were respiratory symptoms what you initially thought with a cleaning device, an air cleaning device, of this technology, this advanced technology, did you think it was just, you know, because we breathe, what, 3,000 gallons a day we inhale, did you think that you would see in a building with mold or excessive bacteria in it, do you think you would just see respiratory problems? I did. And, um, um, you know, a few years back, there was a, a study done about people that live close to interstate highways, and they had a higher uh, uh, incidence of liver disease. And what they were able to connect is inhaling the diesel fumes got into your body and ultimately ended up in your liver and caused liver disease problems, everything from cancer to fatty liver, you know. And, and so then we started looking at other areas. And, you know, now we, now we know that some skin disease is caused by the pollutants that you're inhaling, some arthritis disease, 
A lot of heart disease is caused by the air that you're breathing every day that you don't think about. And, you know, and I talk to a lot of people who tell me, well, Fred down the street's house may be polluted inside, but mine isn't. And, and you know, the, the thing about it is, is when, when we changed our construction practices to basically to have an energy efficient home, We've sealed, hermetically sealed that home, you know, in such a way that once the pollutants get in the, in the home, there's no way for, nowhere for them to go other than to keep, continue to build up. And you're inhaling that. And you, things that you do to clean your house, using bleaches and ammonias and that sort of thing, the fumes that those, those cleaning products are emitting is pollution. The things that you're, you know, that you're, the furniture, your draperies, it ha they're made with different formaldehyde products. That's... What's ending up in us. Right, exactly. So, we, you know, the things that you don't think about as being pollutants are pollutants. And the misnomer is, folks, that my house couldn't have this because we have someone come in and clean it. Or, or my, myself and my wife keep it totally spotless. I gotta tell you, behind those walls or when that home was being built, there may be some secrets in there. When we get back, I wanna tell you a little bit about the technology, those who don't know of this unit, called a Pioneer. We'll be right back. Chris Chase is here, uh, Pioneer.net. He's been here for 20 years or so as a sponsor of Know the Cause. Thank you. God bless you. Some air pollutants are poisonous. Inhaling them can increase the chance that you'll have health problems. Who said that? Chris Chase, Doug Kaufman, you know. EPA. The EPA. The Environmental Protection Agency is saying it, and yet I don't think we heed it, Chris. Had a question for you, you know, I do this live show on Facebook, and this is more of a question you can answer than me. It comes from Theresa. It says, if someone has mold, uh, do you believe they can resolve it themselves, or should they hire a professional? Well, uh, <laughs> the, the simple answer is, is they probably need to hire a professional. Mm. Uh, and the reason that I say that is, is, is uh, uh, when your home was being constructed, you know, the lumber set out, got wet, exposed to moisture and that sort of thing, which uh, mold just loves yeah. because it's got a food source and it's got the moisture and then you've got the ambient te temperature. But, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, if you're talking about a specific problem like a, um, a leak somewhere, and you can see visible mold, you can take um, a product like Orange TKO and get rid of the surface mold and then use the air treatment system to uh, get rid of the airborne mold that you're breathing mm -hmm. and, and inhaling. And that's really where, where you're more likely to get sick is from that, from that approach. Yeah. So my advice would be to start doing the cleanup on what you know is a problem first and see what happens. Yep. By the way, the professionals that come to your house, folks, they can't, in Texas anyway, I don't know about Georgia, but they can't also remediate the house. So they can't give you a bid for $7,000 and then go and do the work, right? That They're preventing some, it's damage control by doing that. They'll come to your house and sometimes with a dog, you know, which I think is fascinating, they can smell cancer and they can smell mold, duh. Chris, tell us a little bit about the technology. This isn't your grandma's air cleaner, right? This is brand new, and it, it's, it, I shouldn't say it's brand new, it's actually a couple of decades old, and yet it is still at the top of its game. Photocatalysis, what is that just in a sentence? Well, it's, uh, photo is, in, in scientific jargon, is basically light. So it's a light-driven technology. Mm -hmm. As you guys can see, see that pretty blue light right there? That sits in your home, you plug it in, and every year you pull this thing out, shut it off, pull that thing out, which is a light source, put a new lamp module in, and you're empty. Do you hear the noise associated with this? There is absolutely none. Because it's light-driven, you know, it's 
why it is light bulb. Yep. Um, it's also because it's light driven, you don't have filters to clean, which is messy. And uh, also because it's, it, it's uh, uh, light driven, it doesn't, it doesn't have a fan or whatever to make, to make noise and, and that sort of thing. So, I mean, there, there's a, it's, it's basically a technology that treats all three major categories of indoor air pollutants or uh, microbial, chemicals or odors, and particulate. So one size kind of fits all. And folks, the interesting thing about this is this little light source inside, you can get a light source for 350 square foot, let's say you live in a bachelor unit, you know, somewhere out in Los Angeles, tiny with a bedroom and bathroom and kitchen. Get the tiny light source. Let's say you've got 700 square feet downstairs and upstairs. We put one upstairs and one downstairs because there's a light source that will fit 700. And then the average home, this is kind of bright, the developers uh, came up with this. The average home in America is about 14 to 1600 square feet. So there is a big lamp, same, I mean, a, a more dynamic lamp fits in here that covers 1,500 square feet. And uh, just every year you replace that. It just, this makes such good sense to me, folks. This is a technology that I employ in my office and in my home. Chris, thank you for coming in. It's pioneer.net. Now, as we exit here, I want to leave you with a little tip from the company. Go to pioneer.net. Many basements have no ventilation and therefore hold a lot of moisture. That moisture is a breeding ground for airborne mold spores. How important is collagen in your body? It's very important. What destroys it? Nurse Jenny Herbacek is gonna discuss that. And then we're the only show I can guarantee you on television that does a whole segment on turkey poop and its effect on your health. Watch this. Hi. I'm Jenny Herbacek with The Cancer Connection. Let's talk collagen, the connective tissue that holds our bodies together. Cancer cells like to destroy collagen, that way they can move through the body much easier. So let's make it tough on cancer cells. Eat lots of foods that provide the building blocks for great collagen, foods with lots of vitamin C and the amino acids lysine and proline. These amino acids are generally found in protein foods like yogurt, homemade bone broth, and wild caught salmon. For Know the Cause, I'm Jenny Herbacek. You know, this is a very serious subject that we're going to talk about right now. It impacts a lot of people, and yet doctors don't know it, as you'll see in a minute. This question came up. Explain more about the link between the spreading of turkey poop as fertilizer and illness. Joanne had this happen to her. Quite serious. Watch this. My husband ordered uh, two yards of turkey litter. He dumped it in our garden, and we were trying to spread it. The ammonia was so thick, I couldn't do it. My husband stayed out there and breathed it until he got it straightened, straightened out. And from then on, he's been going downhill. After breathing all this stuff, he got this white fungus-looking stuff in his mouth, covered his tongue, inside of his jaw, his throat, everything. And the went to the dermatologist. He um, he he got tweezers and pulled it off of his tongue and off the inside of his jaw. He sent it off to Little Rock, and it came back as a yeast infection. And just this week, he was diagnosed with lung cancer. And I just, I can't hardly really take that. Ever since then, he's had sinus infections, he's had colds, he's had various things that the doctors cannot uh, diagnose. My next step is what Doug said, and change his diet, change both of our diets, because I've had cancer twice. That's all I know to tell. It's kind of a hard testimonial to watch, and it must have been rough to be in her shoes with her husband going through this. Folks, I contend there are misdiagnoses every hour of every day in medical science. Here a guy gets into turkey poop. What's in turkey poop that might have given him a horrible yeast infection and maybe then lung cancer? Let's discuss that, okay? First of all, I want you to see this. This is an x-ray. One of those 
has histoplasmosis, has a fungus in their lung. The other is late stage lung cancer. Can you tell the difference? Neither can I. Here's what scares me. I don't think many radiologists can either. Okay, I think lung cancer is diagnosed every day and it's not really lung cancer. X-ray is one thing. Today we have CT scans, and CT scans are about 13 to 20 percent accurate for actually determining lung cancer, you know, nodules on the lungs. Well, what are the other 80 percent? They're seeing nodules. What causes them if it isn't cancer? Could it be fungus? Lung cancer. This is an old, wonderful old medical book from 1957 from Johns Hopkins University. It says, disseminated histoplasmosis, that's a fungus that gets into the bloodstream, is found to coexist with leukemia, lymphosarcoma, sarcoidosis, and Hodgkin's disease much more frequently than is statistically justifiable based on coincidence. Okay, you got that? Seeing a whole lot of leukemia patients with fungus in their bloodstream. Is it really leukemia then? Or if they treated with antifungals, would that leukemia get better? God, I hope one day doctors will begin seeing this. Next, cough linked to birds. If you have any type of lung problem, COPD, asthma, et cetera, and, now have, and have not ever smoked, consider this. Did you ever have parakeets? Did you go to your grandparents with parakeets? Did you ever uh, spend time in a bat cave? Have you been to Austin, Texas? Lots of bats there. Have you ever swept up bird droppings? Why is this so relevant? According to birdchannel.com, this is a fascinating website, by the way, bird droppings have three components, a green portion, which is the feces. Bird droppings are green, and I'm convinced God puts the white coating, which is fungus, uh, over the poops so they can dissolve and be blown away by the wind. But this is important. So bird poop, bird droppings, is green, but it always comes out white for that reason. Several recent research papers have discussed how common lung cancer misdiagnosis really are. If you have any lung problems and have been around bird droppings, always tell your doctor to rule out fungus first. Why is that relevant, folks? It's not just bird droppings. It's mold in your home. I wonder how many kids grew up in a basement, moldy basement, and 40 years later have lung cancer, never smoked a cigarette in their life. Could it have taken 40 years for this slow-growing mold to look like lung cancer? I think it could. Inhaling bird or bat droppings also means inhaling two fungi, histoplasma and cryptococcus. By the way, they're both sac fungus that grow in sacs that have been linked to very serious lung diseases, including pneumonia. Worse, because fungi can grow in sacs, and we talked about that a few minutes ago. Lung fungal infections resemble lung cancer. Okay, and finally this. Is it really lung cancer? In 2013, the medical journal Lung stated this. Fungal infections can present with clinical and radiological, that means x-ray findings, that are indistinguishable from lung cancer, such as lung nodules or lung masses. Please be careful out there. Always talk to your doctor about fungus first. Don't go away. It's called golden milk. It's an elixir of coconut and turmeric and ginger, and only Kyle Drew knows how to make it this way. So into the kitchen we go, and watch what Kyle does with this elixir. Bedtime beverages. You ever have any of that warm milk? Well, we don't usually drink normal milk on the phase one diet. We do something like a coconut milk or an almond milk, some kind of nut milk. This is coconut milk and we heat the coconut milk up to make this elixir. This elixir is called golden milk. It's become very popular on the internet. Maybe you've seen it. And I like to tweak it a little bit, but let's give it a try. Two cups of nice, warm coconut milk right into a blender. So many of my things are blended. I don't know why that is, but I always put things in the blender. I think they mix up real well. And then it's super simple after that. What we do, just a teaspoon each of ginger and turmeric. You know the good turmeric spice, anti-inflammatory, antifungal, really, really good for you. Well, let's make it really, really tasty for you too. Put it straight into the blender, a teaspoon each, and then black pepper. The reason we use a little black pepper, and I'm talking just a pinch, that's it. A little black pepper helps to absorb all of the curcuminoids, the good guy yellow pigment, pigments that are in curcumin, I'm sorry, turmeric. Let's talk about this. When you have 
turmeric spice. You're getting curcuminoids. These are anti-inflammatory. They're antifungal. They're anti a lot of things that I don't know if I want to say on TV, but trust me, a quick search will show that you want this every day. Here we go with the stevia. I always do mine to taste, and you can too. Let's pop the top on and blend for just a little bit. Here we go. Oh, perfect. Now the reason that you keep blending this is because you want everything to get mixed together, including that black pepper. I know black pepper with the sweet, it doesn't seem right. It'll seem right when you try it. Two cups, and that means that you've got enough for two. Perfect. Let's give it a try. You really can't smell this one. It's, gosh, it's so surprising because it's creamy, it's spicy, it's sweet, but it has a little pepper at the end, and that pepper helps to absorb all of the good things, and you can wake up feeling not so sore, not so achy, and go to bed with a good night's sleep, milk-free, phase one. Mm. So we're definitely all under a good amount of stress these days. So my top four tips to reduce the stress. Number one, sleep. I know we don't think we have a lot of time to sleep, but sleep is really important and helps you to be more productive. So try to get your seven to nine hours if possible. Exercise, exercise, just getting the blood going, helps you detox a little. Just, you can do it in your apartment, home, or outside, but just get exercising. Phase one diet, a good whole food based diet, eating lots of fiber and good fats and your meats um, and your berries and things like that are gonna make you feel so much better and they impact your mood and your stress in a big way. And then last of all, prayer. You can't forget prayer. That really helps me to calm down, get perspective and decrease the stress. So there you have it, folks. I mean, you get it one way or the other, right? You're either sitting at home like this or you're sitting at home with a Pioneer unit. Thank you, Chris Chase, for coming in today. This is quite a technology. As I said in the show, we have two of these at, or three of these at home and we have one over in my office. This is a great, great technology. Different than anything else out there. There's the telephone number, pick it up, give him a buzz. By the way, he'll finance this over a six month period for you and so forth. As we allude to on the show, why do we spend so much on pure water, right? Bottled water and organic food and organic clothing and so forth and nothing on our air because many homes have an air problem, a mold problem, and this helps tremendously. It just smells so good as I'm standing here next to it. Jenny, thank you. This is fascinating, isn't it? About collagen and cancer cells ability to just gobble it up. Kyle, you look great in the kitchen. What a drink that was, golden milk. And then what'd you think about the guy who spread the turkey poop for fertilizer and then ends up with a very serious disease? I believe there's a close association and intimacy that exists between fungus and cancer. God bless you folks, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.